المهم this brings us to the second golden rule and that is create the sense of urgency there is urgency the urgency is there they don't see it now I'm not, did I say the word push? who said push? did you hear me say push? did I utter the word push? who's saying push? I never said push except in the negative term now no push you're not pressuring people no pressure but you are creating urgency urgency is why now why you need to do this now now you you make you you make this Malaysian I'll give you the technique you make it Malaysian okay because you're not pushy people so the idea for the they don't push but they let the individual know that you don't have forever either you don't have forever and one of the worst things for du'at is when they think the person has forever and one of the worst things for the madru is when they think they have forever. Meaning, I was saying both sides. Um, uh, many times this happens in America. A guy will come into the masjid wanting to take the shahada and a brother will start to give him the shahada and an uncle will come and stop them. Say, no, 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 he's not ready. Let him, let him go and think about it. One time this happened, a friend of mine said, I started giving the guy the shahada and uncle came, stopped. He said, he's not ready. And the guy left the masjid and I never saw him again. Type this uncle, how did he know he's not ready, Akhi? The man came ready. He came to the house of Allah by himself and he said, I want to become Muslim. All you have to do is review. You believe there's one God, Muhammad no. That's it. Give him the shahada. That's it. It's not your job to even delve further. What do you do for a living? You work at a bank or, or no, it's not your business. Yeah? So uh, many times the dua will tell him, think about it, take this, read it. The other day there was a guy who was like, he was very old, old British guy, saw so in the masjid in, in, in Sudan. His friend brought him to the masjid. He's been trying to talk to him about Islam for two years. And when his friend was about to take the shahada, <coughs> the guy started, his, I mean, the, the man started to take the shahada. His friend started to hesitate. Uh, maybe, maybe we should let him wait. So, two years he's been waiting. What, what do you want him to wait for? He's ready to do it. He's a grown man. He's ready to do it. No one pushed him. There was no knife to his uh, head or anything. Khalas then. So that's one. Number two, from the side of the person, they think, I can read this later and look into it later. But later what happens? They have exams, papers, they have bills to pay, they have work, and they put it aside. And so many people were this close to becoming Muslim, and these are true stories, and they drop dead. Drop dead. I can tell you a lot of true stories. Where There's one man, never seen a man who loved Islam like that. Loved Islam and Muslim so much. No Muslim ever offered him to become Muslim. So the sister, she said, we were doing the PhD with him. We're all sitting together working as a group. He said, I'm going to go get a drink of water. She said, he went right in front of us like that. Got the water, got a heart attack, and he died right there. This close to becoming Muslim, you could have just invited him. Or let him know that you don't have that much time. How many of these stories? You don't have that much time. But we tell people, no, you just here is the book. Take it, read it slowly over the next 17 years. And then whenever... I do, I do things like this. So, urgency is why now? And why now? Many times we tell people, look, you have, we're busy in this life. We have bills, exams, papers. We have work. So if you don't do this now while you're convinced, you may never get another chance. And there was a guy in our university every semester. And I don't know what his name is. I used to call him Al-Hasan because he looks like his name is Al-Hasan. His name wasn't Al-Hasan. Every time he said, Al Hassan, did you become Muslim yet? And, and then he's even ashamed now. He's like, no, no. Why didn't you? I told you do it last time. I told you you're not going to come back to it. You're going to be too busy. Shaitan, that's his job. Yeah. I see him next. Hassan, did you become Muslim? Mm, no. Mm -hmm. Didn't I tell you to do it last time? You still didn't listen to me. Do it now, man. No, I need time. You don't have time. They don't have time. How do you know you have time? This is a true story. There was a dinner for non Muslims. And then at the end of the, the there was a lecture for them, yani, dinner and a lecture. At the end of the lecture, they brought this <coughs> lady and she wanted to become Muslim. So I did a quick check with her. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, yes. Five pillars, yes. Everything's good, yes. I told her, okay, you now, same stuff I repeat to everybody. It's the same speech. It's just new to them. You now have the ingredients of being a Muslim. You agree with it and that's how you become Muslim. You just say what you agreed with a few seconds ago. So become a Muslim right now. Mm, no. I said, okay, why not? She said, I need more time. So the next question is, how much time do you need? She said, two months. Now, I'm telling you exactly what I said. I'm not changing the story. She said, I need two months. I said, exactly. Two months is too long. She said, okay, Friday. Like that, this quickly. 
it was Wednesday night. She said Friday. She went from two months to two days. You see why? Yeah, she went from two months to two. Did I push her? I just said two months is too long. It's too much. So she said, okay, Friday I'll do it. I said, now I'm going to try one more time. So what's going to happen from now till Friday? You're just going to be busy tomorrow at work. And then you wake up Friday. Just do it right now. What will happen on Friday? To do it right now. She said, no, I'll come to your center on Friday after the class. I'll take the shahad. I said, okay. If there's nothing else I can do to convince you, just do me this favor. From now until Friday, please wear your seatbelt and drive very carefully and don't die. <laughs> she said, oh, you're scaring me. I said, well, I'm sorry, but that's how it works. So many people died and they were interested in Islam. The angel of death doesn't say, well, she has a Friday appointment. Saturday morning will come knock on her door. <laughs> so just drive carefully and try not to die until Friday. That's all. Yeah? Any pressure here? No. No pressure. Right? So uh, that's it. I got in my car. I drove home. And then the sisters called my cell phone. They said, uh, Alhamdulillah, she took her shahad. So creating the urgency. You don't have forever. Death can come at any minute. And if you don't do it now, maybe you'll never get a chance to look at this again. And we give them stories of people who never got a chance to read again or never got a chance to speak to a Muslim again. And they died before that happened. So creating the urgency. Did the Prophet do this? Oh, how many times and how many places did the Prophet do this? How many times in the seerah, Ya Fulan, Qul la ilaha illallah, Thumam ibn Uthal, like we mentioned, the Prophet tied him up to the masjid for three days and every day he would come and ask him how he is, meaning a change of heart, checking on him like that. And then um, with Umar ibn Khattab, but of course the, the background of the story is that they thought Umar anhu was trying to come to kill the Prophet So the Prophet grabbed him and shook him. Don't use this technique here. I don't think it will work. Yeah? Isn't it time for you, O son of Al-Khattab? Uh, Ikram ibn Abi Jahl, in one narration where... No, not Ikram ibn Abi Jahl. Um, in one narration, al Walid ibn Mughira, and uh, when the Prophet ﷺ... No, Yaqi, Min Sadiq al Walid ibn Mughira, his best friend since childhood. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'eet. Yeah? And the Prophet ﷺ was in his home, and... He, he's, he invited the Prophet he says he's going to fix relations between the Prophet and the Quraysh. So he invites him to his home and he brings food. And it was for the Arabs, it's very bad if a guest comes to your home and he doesn't eat. So he tells the Prophet eat. The Prophet said, I'm not going to eat. He said, eat. He said, I won't eat until you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha and Muhammad Rasulullah. So the man said the Shahada, so the Prophet ate in his home, just so the Prophet would eat. Now the Prophet was trying to get him to. He was hoping that the shahada will pull him into Islam. Because where did this happen before? His uncle Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. He publicly said he was Muslim, but he wasn't. He only said it to justify hitting, I'm, I mean, I'm shortening the story, to justify hitting Abu Jahl. So to justify that, he said, Atasubbu Muhammad, wa ana ala deenih, you curse Muhammad. Well, I'm upon his religion, aqulu ma yaqul, and he hit him. So now he publicly said he's Muslim, but he just used it as an excuse. And now he can't go back on his word. So he says he goes to the Kaaba, he makes dua to Allah. He said, no sooner had I finished the dua, Islam entered my heart. So the Prophet was hoping that when Uqba ibn Abi Mu'it will say the shahada, it will pull him into Islam. Let's see if the technique worked. Taban, the story here is to say urgency. The story isn't to say use this technique. You understand? Take a, take a guy for Nasila Mak is like... You know, <laughs> I won't eat until whatever. And the point, the point is the urgency. I just want you to see. So then he actually, Uqba then goes back and he was Muslim. But what happened? His best friend from, from since childhood, Walid ibn Mughira, said, No way. You either me or Muhammad. And the man makes a huge mistake and he goes back and he spits on the blessed face of the Prophet. And Allah, this also, uh, the ayah, you know. And, and, and anyways, it's, really, it's linked to that. So, but the point is, many times also on the, the eve of the conquering of Mecca, Abu Sufyan is in the tent of the Prophet Sallam. He's not a Muslim. The Prophet tells him, isn't it time for you to believe that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? He said, as for La ilaha illallah, I don't have a problem with that. Muhammad Rasulullah, I still have issues with this. So Al-Abbas tells him, do it. They're encouraging him now. And he says the Shahada. Now, is it quality Shahada? Not necessarily, but it doesn't matter. The point is, no, I'm not saying get bad quality shahadas. The point is here, 
is that the shahada is step one that you're saying I'm willing to submit and then he narrates himself that iman only entered his heart the second day the second day yeah so the point is create the urgency you don't have forever you don't have the rest of your life you don't know how long the rest of your life is if you're convinced do this now and in a very kind gentle way try to convince someone to become Muslim and again if you're finding any of this stuff from experience and I know sir that you are experienced yani, we don't want to praise you but you are an experienced da'ya correct yani, without over praise you've spoken to people yeah so based on, ex on experience he's and he has come up with how to work around certain issues and I'm pointing to him because he has experience to say this we don't want you just sitting here and if you've never experienced this just to say no this won't work try something and there is and in the end the human beings around you in this world find a way that will work around them and you can't be that you're surrounded by people that there's no technique that will work on them even roundabout ways, indirect ways, slow, very subtle, over months, fine. Maybe there's no shahadas in 10 minutes, maybe 10 months. Okay, that's your technique, Ten, whatever, I mean, figure it out, but don't stop yourself and say, it's not gonna work, and they'll be offended, just try something. We gotta do something for this deen, yeah? And this same guy who's a da'ya, oh, people will be offended if I'm in their face, but if he's hired at a clothing store, he'll come in their face. Why is it for clothing, for jeans, you're like in people, people's face? For the religion, just, huh, try something nice, you know? Anyways, that's the second golden rule. Create the urgency, and meaning now. Why not now? And if it's not now, it may be never. You may never get another chance. You may never get another reminder. You might die before you get a chance. You might become busy with life. So, that was the second golden rule.